Alright guys, today in this lecture we're going to be talking about different types of IPv4 transmissions. The three types we're going to be talking about are unicast, multicast, and broadcast. So let's start out with unicast. Unicast packets are packets that are going to go to a single host, from a single host. So let's say we've got four computers connected to a switch. All right, we've got host A, host B, host C, and host D. Host A is sending a packet to host D. Now, this is unicast packet because it needs to go one to one place. So that packet's going to travel up to the switch and out to host D. That is a prime example of unicast. Unicast really isn't uh, complex. It's simple to understand and makes up the primary uh, amount of packets you're going to find on a network. The next one we are going to talk about is multicast. Now multicast is significantly more complex. What multicast is, is multicast is a single packet from one host that will go out to multiple hosts after hitting a switch or something to replicate it. So let's let's take a look at a multicast environment. Okay, so here we've again got four hosts. And let's say host A is sending the packet again. Now Multicast uses a special range of IP addresses. You have two types of um, multicast. You've got a local multicast, local only, or uh, link local, which are ones that are only going to work inside of a network range. So anything inside of this part of the switch. This is out to the internet. So. Link local will work on this side of the switch. Global will work on this side of the switch. So, for link local, there are, uh, is a class D set of IP addresses reserved. It's a special IP address range reserved for link local IP uh, link local um, multicast transmissions. This IP range is 224.0.0.0. .0 .0 .0 to 224.0.0.225. This is your link local multicast range. So let's give host A a 224.0.0.1, C 224.0.0.3, and uh, host D. 224.0.0.5. Now, when host A sends this multicast packet out, it's going to come up to the switch, and the switch is going to say, well, this needs to go to anybody on the link local multicast domain. So it's going to take and send that packet out to host, D, uh, host C and host D, and it's going to arrive. This is extremely useful because it's going to uh, conserve bandwidth especially if you've got one thing going to multiple hosts. That host, that's, uh, that server that is sending out the file is going to deliver that to multiple clients uh, with a single packet from itself. So instead of this, this computer, instead of having to send two copies of this packet, was only, uh, only had to send one packet. So it conserves a lot of cable bandwidth. Um, some of the common places this is used is actually in video and audio broadcasts. It's used in uh, routing information exchange, distribution of software, and even uh, remote gaming. So multicast is actually used more frequently than you would think. Now we aren't going to get too in depth in it. This is pretty much the show. There's one more thing I'm going to tell you about multicast, and that of course is your global multicast range. Okay. 
your global multicast range is going to span from 224.0.1.0 all the way up to 238.255.255.255. So these together make up class D addressing and classical addressing, which we'll get into next. Um, the final type of transmission we're going to talk about is multicast. Now, uh, not multicast, broadcast. Now, broadcast is a packet that is going to go out to all hosts on a network, regardless of uh, their address. So, let's take a look at multicast here really quick. Not multicast, broadcast. We're talking about broadcast. So let's take a look at broadcast here. Broadcast, you've got, let's say, again, four hosts connected to a switch. And host A needs to get a packet to host B, host C, and host D. There are two ways it can do this. Now, in a case like this, you would probably just use what's called a limited broadcast. Now, the limited broadcast IP address is going to be 255.255.255.255. Now, this is a link local broadcast. It can only be done to this network on this side. Now, don't confuse a global broadcast with the ability to broadcast storm everything. What it is, is a uh, global broadcast, which we'll get into next, will be able to broadcast to an entire remote network. So we'll, we'll cover that in a sec. So let's say host A is going to send a limited broadcast packet out to your switch. Okay, so this packet will need to go into the switch, and then if it's got the address 255.255.255.255, it's going to take and be replicated out to everybody, saying this is a broadcast packet. Now, uh, some, of the, some of the times this is used, for, uh, used is DHCP uses broadcast, uh, network time protocol also, uh, actually NTP to my knowledge uses multicast, so avoid that. It's uh, the big one that uses it is DHCP is a huge deal. Another thing is uh, it's used for mapping upper layers to lower layers as well as uh, it usually can't be routed. Now, um, one kind of broadcast that can be routed is what we call a direct broadcast. Okay, so let's draw up another diagram here with some routers in it. So we've got router to router switches, which is going to have multiple clients per switch. Okay, so Let's say this is the 172.0.0.0 network, and this over here is the 205.0.10.0 network. So, what we need to do is we need to send a broadcast from host A out to all clients on this address. So what you're going to do is you're going to send a direct broadcast. Now a direct broadcast uses a different address. It is going to use, in this case, 205 dot zero dot ten dot two five five as the target address or you are trying to broadcast to this network so you use that network's broadcast address and a direct broadcast is routable and it can be sent across um, multiple hops in order to get to the end destination to broadcast a packet out so now now that we've kind of talked about the three types of uh, three types of transmissions that IPv4 uses uh, next, we're going to get into special IP addresses and classful and classless IP um, assignment and who assigns the IP addresses uh, 
over our next lecture. I hope you guys enjoyed, and we'll see you next time.